Hello guys and dolls, welcome back to Huddy Badger 3D Print and Paint. Today we are at Form Next 2024. We have got loads coming for you. Uh, we are sponsored this year by Sunlu. Take a look in the video description for a link and a discount code. Just to be clear, it's an affiliate link, helps the channel out. Let's take a look at some of the amazing tech that is on display at the show. Welcome back to Honey Badger 3D Print and Paint. Today we are at the Hay Gear stand. We are taking a look at some of the best looking machines at the show. Talk to me a little bit about Hay Gears before we get into this. Sure, okay. So uh, for people who are unfamiliar with Hay Gears, we've been around uh, doing 3D printing for quite a while now. Already in 2015, we're doing uh, hearables production. So headphone manufacturing using 3D printing. And then we do moved into digital dentistry using uh, a wide variety of 3D printing materials and printers. And we're taking our expertise in material, materials, 3D printing, workflows, and we're bringing that to the consumer audience with our Reflex series of 3D printers. So and, workflow yeah. is the name of the game here, right? Exactly, so, so, right? So let's start with RS. So okay. it wasn't that long ago that you brought out the original Reflex, and Indeed, here we are yeah. with the RS. So talk to me about what's new uh -huh. and this cool pulsing thing. <laughs> Okay, so just a bit of background. So last year we had the Ultracraft Reflex that we yep. launched, um, which was uh, has a 385 nanometer UV wavelength. Um, but the RS actually uses a 405 nanometer UV wavelength. Um, it's more designed uh, can, in comparison to the Reflex, which we launched last year. The RS is designed for kind of more rapid production, so it has mm -hmm. faster printing capabilities, has a slightly bigger uh, build volume as well. A lot of people appreciate having a bit more space to, yep. to get their projects done. Um, and uh, it's also uh, it got features for excellent detail as well, so it's excellent for miniature production as well. Um, and it has a slightly lower price point than the Ultracraft Reflex uh, machine that we launched last year. So but, speeds can be a little bit of a speeds can be a little bit of an academic one, right? Indeed, because it depends it on a lot of different parameters Indeed. can vary whatever it is you're doing. So let's start with speed. So yeah. what sort of layer times are we doing with this? So we're doing about 4.5 seconds per layer on uh, depending on the material that's being used and also uh, uh, the profiles that have been selected in the okay. print system. Yeah. We're not going to do millimeters per hour, and there's a reason for that. Most people who give you millimeters an hour are lying in one way or another. So they're either lying about the, the accuracy that you're going to get, the consistency, the layer height is really high, or they're using a particular, they're using a fast resin or whatever. It's a little bit like saying, my car will do 100 miles an hour if I drive it directly off of a cliff. And then it's technically true, I would be going 100 miles an hour by the time I hit the bottom, but it's not really useful and it's not super repeatable. So four and a half seconds per layer is, is contextually quick. Um, and then what is the glowing thing? <laughs> So what does this do? Okay, so this is our pulsing release module. Um, it's actually also compatible with the Reflex we launched last year as well. But what it does is that it uses compressed air to uh, inflate the NFEP film, and that helps us to reduce that peeling force per layer. And because of that, it means that depending on the structure and the material or the model that you're printing, it might mean uh, fewer supports required because that peeling force is reduced. Uh, it also might mean uh, more resin saving because of the reduced support structures and also potentially faster 3D printing as well. So peel force is, is easily one of the hardest things to combat whenever you're dealing with, whenever you're trying to print quickly. It's the, it's the, it's the force that is exerted on the model as it's trying to come off the FEP, it's released, and then you can go down and start printing the next layer. A lot of companies have come up with different ways to try and approach this issue. Some of them thin out their resins to make the viscosity incredibly low, but that creates some issues with vinyl prints. Um, some companies are sort of tilting their screens and things like that, but you've gone with a, a completely different way of Indeed, doing it, yes, which, is yeah. to, which is to blow compressed air underneath to effectively blow the, to, to move, the, inflate, yeah. the uh, inflate the NFEP so that you then get a release force from that. So you're getting a release force from both the pull, yes. but also from a, from a push exactly. as well. Yes, yeah. All right, okay, fair enough. So build volume, what what are we doing build volume wise? Okay, so the build volume for uh, the RS is a little bit bigger this year. So for the um, uh, full build volume is uh, 20, uh, 222 by 122 uh, by 230 millimeters. So we have a larger volume than the Reflex that we launched last okay. year. Okay. 
resins. So your resin cartridges yes. go in the back here. That's right. And as yes. we're doing four hundred and five, are we just nanometers? Yes. Are we just are we are we really only printing your resins in this, or is it compatible with third party as well? So similar to our Reflex, it's designed for our resins, just because we once we know the materials, the whole uh, workflow and process is happening in the printer, but also the final curing. It means that we can really guarantee like great results from our materials. Uh, so it's a similar setup. In so this is a real ecosystem that we're yes, going exactly. Yes, exactly. Yeah, the idea still. is that you buy, you buy in, yep. you buy, you buy your resin, and then you're able to, you're able to control as many data points as possible. Exactly. To mean you can push resin as far as you possibly can. Indeed. Um, because that's the same with your slicer as well, right? Your, exactly, your, your slicer yeah. also has locked profiles for for all for, the resins. All the resins, yeah. Those are those are static profile. You don't change those settings because they're already they're already tried tested. We will do extensive testing, um, and if there's any tweaks that happen along the way, like new, uh, we have different parameter out, uh, packages that mm -hmm. will be updated in the system to ensure maybe different types of model structures might need uh, different types of profiles. So we try and make sure that the uh, the print process is as smooth as possible for okay. uh, for each of the prints. And then we start talking about the rest of this workflow. So then we come on to wash and cure. Cure. So Cure is, is a very beautiful but relatively standard setup here. I'm assuming have we got heat as well as light in That's this? That's it, right? Yes. Right. So we're also so we've got 360 degrees of um, of, of, of light bars and a normal rotating platform, but it's also heating as well. That stops you getting that awful white residue on your models and it, it, it gets for a more even cure. But then we come on to your wash station. So your wash station is unique um it's completely different to near enough anything else on the market and talk to me about how this actually works okay so uh there's a lot of thought put into this yeah. wash station. we know it looks very very different from what other other people are using on the market but um we did with our research uh this motion at the bottom so the bottom uh kind of uh moves around like this the kind of vortex that we can create and the movement of the um, the washing agent at the in the tank, uh, we found that that to be the most efficient way to use all of the uh, washing agents fully clean the model. Uh, whereas with other solutions, maybe where it's only moving the center part of the liquid, you're not getting as fully clean as yep. possible with this kind of motion. Um, of course, when you're, you're cleaning, you're only using one box at a time. Don't need to stack them when it's actually in operation. But after you're finished, you can put the, uh, the used box on top of the empty box, open the valves, and then the cleaning agent can uh, fall through to the, the empty box, leaving your printed model uh, left in the uh, box on top. Okay, so there's a lot to <laughs> unpack there. So first of all, this was clearly designed by a sommelier because it's, <laughs> it's more it's more agitation than normal. So the way that a lot of wash stations work is either they spray the model, which isn't ideal because delicate models will break. You put a centrifugal force inside, so you put uh, you, you put an agitator in it that will spin, create a vortex. Uh, the problem with that is especially if you have really fine models the cages that you get are normally got quite large gaps and then when you put your model in there's literally a big spinning blender down the bottom that is going to a kick up all the all the crud that was left in the bottom of the thing from last time and it's also probably going to rip off bits of your model so you've not got anything inside of this Correct, it's yeah. all external so it's That's just right. agitating and moving the uh, moving the models around yeah. and then you're using you're just you're just stacking them on top so you drain into this valve, one which means you can then clean out all the nasty stuff from here exactly yeah cleaning this stuff out if you leave if you leave all the uncured resin in the bottom of your um, ipa you'll notice that over time the ipa becomes saturated it lowers the lifespan of your ipa and it just means you have to throw it away Throwing it away is not a simple task, especially in the UK and the EU. Getting rid of this material, it is toxic material. It needs to be treated as toxic material um, and, and trying to sort of get more out of your IPA is something that everybody is trying to do at the moment. Um, and I'm assuming this is still just not using normal, regular IPA. So actually, so, uh, we use ethanol. Uh, right, yes, okay, yeah. so you're using pure ethanol rather uh, than- 95%. 95%, okay, cool, brilliant, well look, Thanks very much for making the time. Likewise, yeah. Thanks for showing us. I can't wait to get one in the studio, which we may just very well try and stick one of these in our little uh, in our little carry case and wander off, but I think they might catch us. So <laughs> thanks very much for having it's us. Catch you on the next Take video.